Greetings to one and all. Welcome to my channel, Knowledge Shared with Elite Inners. This channel is created to share the knowledge of known ideas to the unknown society. And today in this channel, we will be discussing about a small introduction to the subject Power Electronics for Renewable Energy Sources. And also we will be discussing about the assessment methods and the weightages for different assessments and how the CAM calculations that is your internal mark calculations continuous assessment method calculations is being done. Kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for future notifications in this channel. Also if you find that this video will be useful to someone please share this video. And now let us go into the topic that is uh, introduction to the subject uh, power electronics for renewable energy systems. So the overview of the presentation is about, uh, so I will be giving you uh, the syllabus contents and then we will be discussing about the assessment methods and what are the different weightages used for calculating the CAM mark. So in syllabus uh, we will be discussing about what are the topics of each and every unit. So totally there are five units and what are the different topics uh, of each and every unit. All those things will be uh, giving an overview and, uh, and what are the course outcomes of the subject and what is the prerequisite that is uh, uh, prior requirement uh, or prerequisite knowledge that is needed to uh, study this subject as well uh, we will be then we will be discussing about the detailed syllabus and also I will be giving you an overview of uh, what are the different textbooks uh, that is used for the syllabus as well uh, what are the different references uh, that can be used uh, for this uh, subject. And in assessment methods, uh, there are, uh, totally there are five different uh, assessment methods. Uh, that is, we will be having a synchronous test. So, as you all know, what is a synchronous test? So, synchronous test is nothing but uh, that is uh, whatever we are uh, discussing in the class, uh, you will be having a test. So, that is called a synchronous test. And then uh, also, we will be having an asynchronous test. So, asynchronous test is nothing but uh, the test in which uh, uh, that is test for uh, the videos which we post. Okay, so each and every unit uh, will be posting some videos in that we will be asking some questions and that is called as asynchronous test. And apart from that also we will be having weekly test. So weekly test, uh, weekly once you will be having. So as you all know that uh, every week we will be covering one unit and so weekly test will be there. And as well uh, how this assignment uh, pattern and uh, weightage everything will be uh, discussed. And finally, uh, CAET, okay, so continuous assessment uh, end uh, test. So here uh, it will be for 50 marks. So the uh, how uh, and finally uh, using all these uh, test components, uh, we will be uh, arriving a value for 50 and that uh, 50 marks will be taken as your uh, CAM mark that is your internal marks. And then you will be uh, having an external examination for 100 marks and again that will be converted to 50 marks. And finally, these uh, uh, that is internal 50 marks and external 50 marks will be added together, and uh, the grade will be arrived uh, for each and for for, uh, for this subject. Okay. So this is how the entire flow of the presentation is all about. And now we will be discussing about uh, what are the different uh, topics uh, that is being covered in the syllabus for power electronics for renewable energy system. So here uh, the subject code is uh, P18 triple E 0012 and the subject name is power electronics for renewable energy systems. So in unit 1 uh, we will be discussing about uh, the introduction part that is introduction in the sense uh, uh, we will be discussing about uh, what are the various uh, types of renewable energy systems and uh, a qualitative treatment of uh, different types of renewable energy systems will be discussed in the introduction part. Then in unit 2, we will be discussing about uh, the photovoltaic energy conversion that is uh, uh, solar PV uh, will be discussed 
and uh, uh, what are its advantages disadvantages uh, and some design aspects also will be discussed in uh, unit 2 related to solar pv and in unit 3 we will be discussing about the wind energy conversion systems so we will be discussing about what are the different types of technologies that are available uh, for the wind energy conversion systems in today's uh, uh, trend and also what are the um, uh, what are the different challenges that are uh, there in the wind energy conversion systems so those things we will be discussing and then we will be discussing about uh, what are the grid uh, in unit 4 we will be discussing about what are the grid uh, connection issues uh, for the uh, WCS in the, uh, in the full form is nothing but wind energy conversion system and SECS is nothing but uh, so solar energy conversion systems. So both uh, has to be connected to grid in order to uh, in order to transmit the power to long distances. So what are the different uh, aspects and what are the different challenges and uh, what are the different technologies that are available uh, for the grid connected uh, WECS and SECS will be discussed in the unit 4. And finally, in unit 5, so this is the most important part for the smart grid uh, related uh, uh, advancements that is hybrid renewable energy systems. As you all know that renewable energy cannot be a standalone system uh, because when it is standalone, uh, it cannot supply the power uh, 24 by 7 because it is highly intermittent in nature. That is the main drawback of renewable energy system. So, it can be connected uh, uh, along with a uh, uh, a base plant like thermal plant or uh, uh, nuclear plant. So, that is called as hybrid. So, hybrid is nothing but a combination of renewable energy system along with the with some base plant. So, uh, during those cases, what are the different uh, technologies and what are the different challenges, what are the advantage, disadvantage and uh, what are the different types, everything we will be discussing in a hybrid renewable energy system. So, this is the overall view of the uh, subject uh, power electronics for renewable energy system and uh, and now we will discuss about uh, the syllabus in detail. So, this is uh, the syllabus which I have shared in the uh, MS Teams uh, to you and uh, the subject code is uh, P18 triple E 0012 power electronics for renewable energy system. The course outcome for this uh, subject is uh, that is uh, CON is nothing but to gain knowledge on various renewable energy sources and their impacts. So, this is the first uh, course outcome one. So, in this you will be taught about uh, yeah, renewable energy sources. Uh, various types of renewable energy sources and what are its different challenges, impacts uh, on the present uh, uh, world's economy, everything will be discussed. Okay. And course outcome 2 is nothing but uh, to understand the basic concepts of wind and solar energy conversion systems in detail and the concepts of the maximum power point tracking algorithm. So, this is uh, playing a very vital role in present uh, uh, renewable energy concepts because maximum power drawing, uh, maximum power tracking will always reduce the uh, area because if you are able to track the maximum power or you, if you are able to extract the maximum power then the area requirement for uh, the re uh, renewable energy sources will be can be minimized so that is the main uh, so uh, many research papers are there in this uh, maximum power point tracking algorithms so those things we will be discussing in detail what are the different types of MPPT algorithm and uh, which uh, type of MPPT algorithm is suitable for which type of uh, technology, all those things will be discussing. And uh, the course outcome 3 is nothing but uh, to understand the concepts of uh, grid uh, connected uh, solar and wind energy systems. So, uh, as you all know that uh, in standalone, uh, the solar and wind systems uh, will always be intermittent and uh, you will not be getting a consistent or uh, regulated uh, output uh, power and voltage. So, because of which you need uh, to be, uh, you need the renewable energy sources to be connected to the grid. So, that is the main uh, challenging aspect. So, you know that grid is a pure form of energy. So, again the solar and wind are highly intermittent in nature and because of which uh, there will be large fluctuations. So, you need a power electronic interface before connecting it to the grid. So, that is the main uh, thing and uh, so what are the different types of interfaces that are used uh, for the solar and wind energy systems uh, we will be discussing in detail. And the course outcome 4 uh, is nothing but uh, knowledge and different types of hybrid systems So uh, and to expose into uh, various applications. As, as I have already said hybrid system is nothing but 
that is solar will be connected uh, uh, to the base plants okay solar will be solar or renewable energy system whatever will be can be connected to the base plants so it has to be connected to the base plant in order to achieve the uh, continuity of power okay so otherwise uh, the solar and wind will be highly or renewable energy sources will be highly intermittent in nature and because of which uh, uh the load uh, has to be the load uh, power quality will be highly disturbed and because of which we need a base plant uh, 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 apart from the renewable energy sources and uh, the course outcome 5 is nothing but uh, to choose the power converter uh, for the control of uh, wind and solar energy system so as i have said uh, in order to interface with the grid and in order to control the output power because the load may be uh, very high or load may be very less. Uh, sometimes uh, the renewable energy sources uh, also will be dynamic. Whereas in case of base power plant, uh, the base power plant source, uh, that is the, so the output of the base power plant like thermal and nuclear can be controlled by us by controlling the flow of coal or by, by controlling the flow of uh, uranium in the nuclear power plant. But whereas in case of wind and solar energy system, it is not so because uh, the source is highly dynamic in nature. The load is also dynamic in nature. So we have to meet. So as I've said, uh, that is uh, the load and uh, generation should always uh, meet or always should be, uh, this, the generation should be slightly greater than uh, load. So in order to have the voltage and frequency fluctuation to be minimized. Okay. So if, uh, you, if, 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 uh, if the gap between the generation and load is very high, then that will lead to voltage and uh, uh, frequency fluctuations to a very high value which will uh, uh, deteriorate the power system components. Okay. So, uh, so that is where uh, this power converter is playing a very vital role in, uh, in controlling the uh, output power, voltage and frequency uh, of the wind and solar energy systems okay. uh, according to the requirement of the dynamic load conditions. So, without the power electronic interface, it is very uh, difficult to interface with the grid. So, these are all the mapping that has been done. Uh, you can just go through the syllabus. So, we will just uh, see the detailed uh, uh, syllabus. So, you can see that in uh, the unit 1, it is nothing but uh, introduction. So, you will be uh, discussing about the environmental aspects of the electric energy con conversion and what are the impacts of the renewable energy generation on the environment. And uh, also, we will be uh, slightly touching on the different types of uh, renewable energy sources like solar, wind, ocean, biomass, fuel cell, hybrid energy systems and uh, hybrid uh, renewable energy systems. So, in this, we will be having only the qualitative study that is uh, design aspects and all will not be in depth. So, uh, just an overview of uh, all the renewable energy systems will be taken care of. Then in unit 2, you will be discussing about, uh, we will be discussing about that is uh, photovoltaic uh, energy conversion. So, in photovoltaic energy conversion, uh, we will be discussing about the uh, solar radiation uh, and its measurements and what are the different types of solar cells. So, there are many types of solar cells and which is, uh, what are the plus and minus of different types of solar cells we will be discussing and uh, what are the different panels and what are its characteristics and uh, what is uh, the uh, influence of insulation and temperature on the PV panels. So, all those things we will be discussing and what do you mean by PV arrays and as you told that in earlier uh, discussion there is a MPPT that is maximum power point tracking is going to play a very vital role in the uh, upcoming generations because there are many algorithms that are uh, into play now because maximum power point tracking algorithm always reduces the area uh, requirement of the renewable energy sources to be installed. And also, it extracts the maximum power from the uh, existing uh, renewable energy power. So, that is why uh, this maximum power point uh, tracking algorithms are playing a very vital role and what are the different types of algorithms everything we will be discussing. And finally, we will be discussing about the applications and uh, like uh, water pumping, street lighting and what are the different types of uh, DC DC converters that are used in solar PV systems, all those things we will be discussing. Then uh, in uh, unit uh, 3, you will be, uh, we, will, we will be discussing about the wind energy systems. So, what are the, what is the basic principle of the wind energy conversion system and uh, what is the nature of uh, wind and uh, what are its characteristics and what are the components of the wind energy conversion system and what are the different types of generators that can be used for the wind energy conversion system and how this uh, wind energy conversion system is being classified and uh, 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 what do you mean by self excitation induction generator which is the most frequently used 90 percentage of the WCS uh, nowadays they use uh, SEIG that is self excited induction generator 
now uh, dfag is uh, coming to play but uh, even though dfag is there its cost is very high but uh, seag is going to play a very vital role in most of the windmills because its cost is less and also like is good uh, so like that uh, and what about, what about the how whether we can be using a synchronous generator for wind energy conversion system and what are the different power condition schemes everything we will be discussing in the third unit that is wind energy systems and the fourth unit uh, it is nothing but uh, grid connected uh, wcs and secs that is wcs in the sense the wind energy conversion system and secs that is a solar energy conversion system as i said uh, the renewable energy sources like wind and solar uh, can be there is a power can be extracted uh, uh, to the very much uh, extent uh, by using the mppt algorithms but the thing is we want to because all these solar energy and wind energy systems may be in the remote areas so it has to be brought to the urban uh, or uh, commercial or uh, industrial locations uh, where the uh, where the uh, more requirement of the power uh, is always uh, present so uh, the further we want to use the grid so as i have said that the wind energy and solar energy conversion system are highly dynamic okay so because the wind is highly turbulent and as well as the solar is varying throughout the day and night times it is not there uh, and during rainy seasons uh, the rain will be interrupting the solar uh, cells and as well uh, uh, what to say uh, it, it is also changing according to the uh, Uh, according to the season it is it is also varying according to the season so these things uh, uh, pose a, a, a many challenges uh, when it is being connected to the grid because always the grid needs a pure form of power only it has to uh, that is it has to always uh, it has to satisfy that uh, ieee 519 standards so because the harmonic level should be less and uh, the power quality should be very high and the frequency voltage Uh, the deviation should be uh, within the specific value uh, so all and synchronization should be better so many different aspects are there in case of the grid connected uh, uh, systems so all those things will be discussed so here we will be connecting what are the different types of grid connectors and what are uh, wind form and its accessories grid related problems will be discussing and uh, what are the types of generator control and uh, what uh, how to enhance uh, the performance uh, improvements what are the different schemes and matrix converter matrix converter is a very very important topic for uh, wind energy conversion system nowadays it's uh, taking a very vital role uh, for grid connection systems because it is having many advantages and what are the, uh, uh, the like uh, line commutator inverters multi level inverters uh, and power converters so you are, you you know you need to know the power electronic concepts uh, when you go in for the fourth unit because uh, the power converters multi level inverters matrix converters are all uh, uh, related to power electronics and uh, how they are going to uh, stabilize the grid uh, during the disturbances all those things we will be discussing and uh, finally we will be discussing about uh, grid connected solar uh, energy conversion system so we will be discussing and finally in the unit 5 we will be discussing about uh, the hybrid renewable energy system as i have said uh, in any any renewable energy systems you need uh, uh, a base plant because uh, the renewable energy system is highly dynamic and uh, it is intermittent in nature and because of which you need a base plant uh, in order to uh, maintain the voltage and the frequency stability uh, so uh, what is the need for hybrid systems and what are the ranges and what are the types of different types of hybrid systems and uh, like wind pv wind diesel wind mini hydro systems everything we will be discussing in this so the reference uh, and the textbooks uh, textbooks uh, like you know we, uh, here we will be following the uh, textbooks like mukund or patel uh, the topic is wind and solar uh, power systems uh, that uh, design analysis and operation it is from crc press london to uh, and, uh, and the edition is on uh, uh, 2005 and i think latest edition is also available uh, you can just uh, go uh, go into the internet and you can just uh, uh, get it and as well the second textbook is gd roy so here uh, the topic is non conventional energy sources fifth edition and uh, it is from karna public publishers and uh, the year of publication is from 2010 and the references are uh, like uh, will be following ned mohan uh, uh, power electronic converters and mh rashid power electronic circuits device and applications uh, from uh, printai sol india so dp kothari and kc signal from uh, uh, renewable energy sources and uh, emerging technologies uh, it is from printai sol india and haitham abu rab 
the topic is uh, power electronics for renewable energy system transportation and uh, industrial applications and it is from IEEE plus uh, Wiley publication and uh, uh, the year of publication is from uh, 2014. So, these are all the different, uh, um, uh, I have given you a, a brief uh, overview of uh, the syllabus, uh, a detailed overview of the syllabus and, uh, and now uh, we will move on with the, uh, there is, uh, uh, what are the different assessment methods for on weightages for this? So, as I have said, uh, assessment methods. So, this is uh, uh, what are the different types of assessment methods? So, now we are going with the online uh, assessments, and because of which we need uh, different types of assessments like this. Uh, so, you will be having a synchronous test. Uh, so, two, totally two number of synchronous tests per week will be there, and best one will be taken from it, and uh, each test will be of 10 marks each. And also, asynchronous test, uh, two tests per week will be there, and best one will be taken again, it is 10 marks each. And a weekly test, uh, one test per week will be there and it, is, it will be of 20 marks. And uh, there will be a total of uh, two assignments and uh, one assignment uh, the first three weeks, that is for the first three units, you will be having one assignment and for the rest of the units, that is the last two units, fourth and fifth unit, you will be having uh, assignment two. The, the first uh, assignment will be of 30 marks and the second assignment will be of 20 marks. And at the end of the cycle, uh, you will be having a CAET exam that is continuous assessment end, end test. So, it will be uh, comprising of all the 5 units and it will be for 50 marks. And uh, the split up of uh, the question paper will be discussed uh, later uh, or it will be intimated at the last. Okay. So, so, how the CAM mark is being calculated is so the, the weekly test, uh, synchronous test, and asynchronous uh, test put together. Uh, will be calculated for 30 marks. So, all the weightages uh, will be taken and finally, it will be converted to 30 marks and assignment will be that is there are totally two assignments. One assignment will be for 30 marks, the other assignment will be for 20 marks and that will be put together and uh, taken for 10 marks. It will be converted to 10 marks and, and the last one is the CAET and uh, you know that uh, the total marks is of 50 marks. Uh, CAET will be uh, uh, conducted and uh, the, the, the uh, 10 marks will be taken, the weightage will be of uh, 10 marks. So, uh, putting together all these three, uh, you will be having the camp total of 50 marks and this will be your internal marks. And uh, finally, you will be going with the, uh, uh, when you satisfy all the regulation uh, aspects uh, that is having the minimum uh, cam and other things uh, and also uh, your attendance, everything you are satisfied, you will be eligible to write the final examination and final examination will be for 100 marks and again it will be converted to 50 marks and cam marks and the external marks converted to 50 marks put together will be giving you a mark out of 100 and that will be converted to grade and that will be the uh, grade that will be in your mark sheet. So, this is how the uh, assessment will be done and uh, So, thank you very much uh, for your patient uh, listening. I hope I have given you a, a detailed uh, discussion on uh, uh, syllabus as well. I have given you an overview and uh, uh, discussions related to the assessment methodologies and its weightage and I am sure you will be clear and if any queries you can just ask me at uh, any time and uh, thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you. Thank you all once again. Thank you.